Raj, you're a traitor, and I hate you. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 35 of the Coconut Curry Podcast. On this episode, we're going to talk about game one and game two of the NBA Finals, as well as make our predictions for the remaining games. We're going to talk about Aaron Rodgers missing minicamp. Oh That's mandatory. Yep. And then enjoy that picture of Raj with an India flag. And then <laughs> we're going to talk about Dan Hurley, JJ Redick, the whole coaching circle of the Los Angeles Lakers. So before we do that, we are three postgraduate students from the University of Pittsburgh. We've got Raj, Peter, and myself all on today. The gang is back together, and we're just chatting about sports and hopefully offering a fresh new perspective on things. If you could please like, comment, subscribe, that would help us out a lot. We always start with disgruntled moment of the week, which is what we're going to do today. Disgruntled meaning angry or dissatisfied. We discuss moments in the sports world or our personal life that makes us, us or ourselves or other people dissatisfied. So we're going to start with Peter because you've yes. got your disgruntled moment of the week ready. Uh, my disgruntled moment of the week is uh, the state of uh, my cardio. Um, it's terrible. Uh, one of So for context, uh, the hospital that I work at, I usually take a bus to it, but it's not too far away. Like I could walk to it, but I'm lazy and I want to go get the bus in the morning. Uh, so <laughs> one of my patients that I was like talking to a little bit, they were like, oh yeah, like it's a really nice day out, like whatever. And I'm like, oh, like maybe I'll walk, I'll end up just walking home today just to like, you know, get outside a little bit because I'm always like, I'm sitting in a doctor's office for like nine hours, basically. Like it's really stuffy in there it's freezing because they're just blasting the ac constantly you've got the lights that come down from the top the fluorescent like, lights yeah. makes everything everybody looks just sick constantly it's just like you know what let me get outside and kind of the area that i was walking in is called shady side so if you could guess there's a lot of shade out there so it's like oh yeah it's a really nice temperature out like it, it's like it's all good like i'm walking i get out of shady side and I start hit the main, our, one of our main streets, which is Fifth Avenue. And there's no shade. And it's really sunny. <laughs> and, it, and what I didn't put together is that I was wearing black scrubs that day. And I started sweating instantaneously. Because I can't walk more than 30 feet without just huffing and puffing. And it is so embarrassing. And I need to start actually doing cardio because I was so embarrassed. I was like, this is terrible. I can't be getting gassed walking home. Like I get it. It's hot, but this is bad. I can't have it. The black scrubs in the summer is brutal. Cause I used to it walk is. from, I used to do like a 10 minute walk from like South O into um, the bus stop to get to yep. downtown. And even just like with, 80% humidity in the morning even if it's only like 70 degrees like yep. I'm like I get to the bus stop and I'm like no sweat <laughs> yeah. no sweat no sweat we gotta get to work we gotta get to work yeah then you show up at work just sweaty and already smelling it's like oh perfect and you're like Ugh. and then you're like sitting down in the hospital and like it's like getting stuck to you and you're like Ugh. yeah it's gross yeah it's just not a great feeling um no the problem is the worst time to work on your cardio is in the summer because it's so oh, yeah. hot outside. of course this is literally the worst time for me to start realizing this but I'll figure it out. It's like the cycle of cardio, though, where it's like realize you have a cardio problem, do cardio, realize you don't like cardio, doing cardio, don't do cardio. <laughs> have a cardio like, problem. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it just goes back in the endless circle. So. Uh, absolutely. Raj, what's your disgruntled moment of the week? You know, it was going to be something about our trip to Chicago, but right now it's a goddamn <laughs> microphone. I don't understand. Like, it's plugged in. It was perfectly fine up until out of nowhere my computer just freezes and then it's a disconnected and now i can't switch over back in the middle of this recording so you know what i'm just gonna hold the microphone like this unconnected the whole time just for the principle of, of it yeah now. a little behind the scenes for everyone listening just constant technology problems all the time like it doesn't make any sense like we record in person um our mics work absolutely fine no issue then you go into the virtual format it should be easy right you plug your mic into the computer it works well last episode if you listen to it mics are a problem raj and i are half on the mics half off peter doesn't have a single issue nope um even though they're the same all, microphones same microphones yeah but whatever we keep rolling um we deal with the punches yes as they come uh, my disgruntled moment of the week yep. is injuries specifically injuries on the philadelphia phillies the baseball team that raj and i root for because 
the Phillies are having a great season. They're 46 and 20 or 45 and 20, whatever the record is right now. And things are going great and the team's playing awesome. But of course, injuries have to arise. Like, I'll, like you can't have nice things is pretty much like the, the moral of the story here. Like, yeah, you know, early in the season, we're playing good. Trey Turner, who's having a great season, gets injured. OK, like, yeah, he pulls his hamstring. Not too serious. He's had some setbacks, whatever. Tra- one player's injured. Trey Turner's fine. Then Brandon Marsh gets injured. He's like our, our ninth guy, can be 10th. He plays some, he's not an everyday player, but he's a big part of the team, gets injured. It's like, okay, well, Brandon Marsh is not the biggest deal in the world. We'll be okay. Two injuries. Then our all-star catcher gets injured and he's out for a month. And it's like, what more, like in the beginning of the season, we were playing, like we had a cake schedule. Everything was fine. Like we could deal with the injuries. Now, all of a sudden you're starting to play like a bunch of teams that are 500 over 500. You have a series with the Dodgers coming up soon. Um, Orioles soon. Now it's like you got three starters out and you're like, wow, this team can't hit anymore because we don't have any, like all of our good hitters are out. So uh, it's, it's the same thing with injuries in any sport, but just specifically baseball. It's just like, there's so many games in the season and you're just like, why? Like why right now does oh, there yeah. have to be injuries? Like we could have used the injuries in the beginning of the season. Exactly. Like I had the same thing because the Yankees just recently played the Dodgers and Juan Soto was out for that whole series and the Yankees only won one of those games. I mean, they, they basically split the series, even though it was a three game series, because the first game it was like two one and went to like went 13 to 11 innings. innings. Yeah, yeah. Like who cares? But that team looks night and day different with one person out of the lineup. And it's like, Jesus. And it was like he, he had like a sore forearm or something. So it's like, yeah, we'll just sit it's him four, down for a couple yeah. days. Forearm inflammation. It's kind of like yeah. <laughs> forearm informa- inflammation similar to like Kristaps injury where it's like, oh, he like tore his medial re- retinaculus or whatever. Like, yeah. What the hell are we even talking it's about like, here? It's like, look, if he needs to rest, let him rest. Just say that. Like, it's fine. Yeah. But like hey, his, ar- his arm hurty. His arm hurty. It's like how like he's a baseball player <laughs> like it's like there was no actual injury it's just like yeah he's sore it's like are, like isn't that kind of just how sports works <laughs> like especially but, baseball it's 162 games like exactly yeah or they say football in the playoffs like everyone's beat up exactly exactly yeah but it's it in baseball especially like it could be just night and day the second like one dude is out of like a nine person lineup and it's just like oh my god this team's terrible well, the crazy thing about the Phillies is they've been so good without Trey Turner, but Trey's batting 343, I think, on the year, or 330, or he's like yeah, right he's around really there. Good. So he's like, he's having a fantastic, well, had a fantastic season until he's been out for like six weeks now. Yeah, true. Um, so everyone's like, oh, the Phillies are doing really good. I'm like, we're not even playing with like arguably our second best player. He's <laughs> out, and now our catcher's out, and now, so it just drives me up the wall because then you're just like, waiting like me and my dad are going to the the two Orioles games uh this weekend and Orioles obviously the second best team in the American League and it's like yeah. oh great the infirmary Phillies against the Orioles like glad I glad I get to go to this series now yeah I don't even get, don't exactly. even get to see all the boys <laughs> and then, don't worry Trey is going to be back next week so we have well he was supposed back. to come back already and then he had a setback so I don't know well, I mean, the team's, the team's been chilling. So they, they, he said he's ramping up his rehab today or yesterday. And then I think they're saying he's going to be activated next Monday. That's good. So hopefully also, a little convenient for JT to go on IR the second that Pride Month starts. Yeah. Just saying. A little we're, sus. We're on to him. <laughs> I saw all the <laughs> he gets, he He's not in the – because – that time that he was he was only in like the states for a couple days during pride month then he goes to london yep of course you're going to play the london series then you come back suddenly you're out for the month of june look I, and he's going to he's going to miss the phillies pride m- month game the uh, like the prime pride game they have it's a little so. sus that's all i'm going to say i agree <laughs> Well, that's our disgruntled moment of the week. Got a little off the rails there at the end, as it usually <laughs> does. Um, but great, great segment as always. Our favorite segment. But now we're going to shift gears into talking about the NBA Finals, which, truthfully, I don't think any of us are happy about because we it's hate the Celtics. Like, it's like, oh, cool. They're the best team. Anyway, like, yep. there's no like cool matchups to watch because it's just like Luca trying his hardest looking amazing like he looks like 2018 lebron out there where he's like putting up 35 a game and then like no one else is supporting him and then jason tatum who's supposed to be the superstar on the team is averaging like 
15 points and like doesn't even look that good Jalen Brown finally learned how to use his left hand and is like good and then J. Rule Holiday has like Kyrie in a straight jacket the entire game <laughs> so it's like oh cool Yep, that's it's a good synopsis of the series. So I've Celtics are up two nothing. Um, and mind you, not none of us like the Celtics. Um, no. but uh, so if you get a negative tone out of this, that, that's <laughs> why. Um, Celtics win game one, one hundred seven eighty nine. It's not particularly close. Uh, Luca goes thirty ten one. Chris stops only at twenty and six in his twenty minutes, but you felt the impact of him playing in that first oh, yeah. and second quarter because it was night and day when he was on the court. It was like he came on the court super exciting splash in 30 foot threes blocking people at the rim made it pretty much was responsible for the Celtics getting up I think near 27 in that game and then they kind of coasted through um just a huge game one victory and something I saw coming I before the game bet Celtics minus 10 and a half and cashed on that easily so um any takeaways from game one Um, I didn't really watch game one, but all I was, all I'm concerned, I mean, the Celtics are on another level right now, playing wise game two. I know it seemed a little bit closer, but the Celtics are just insane. I drew holiday has been balling. Tangus Pengus has been good. I don't know what the Mavs can do to like change the momentum. Maybe just being at home might help. Yeah, I think and then game two, obviously one of five ninety eight. um, Celtics win again, that game, like seven point game. It was 12 14 late uh Mavs went on a late run to get it a little bit closer than, but it was never actually that close um I think the big problem the Mavericks are having is they can't defend the Celtics and the no. Celtics can defend them so if you can't play offense and you can't play defense then you're, you're not just gonna, gonna lose the, like that's just you're how just, that works. You're just gonna lose it doesn't like it does it doesn't matter that Luca is by far the best player on the court because the their team's just a lot better it's like a, i think it's a terrible matchup for dallas um and you can go through like the x's and o's of it all like the celtics some some of their players it's a small sample size but like it's not like jalen brown is averaging 30 on 60 percent shooting it's not like jason tatum's averaging 30 on 50 percent shooting like it's just an all-around team effort at this point like jalen brown's for the series so far is averaging 22 tatum 17 holiday 19 Derek wright 17 chris stop 16 like they're just killing you down the board they're just killing you down the board because no not one guy needs to score a lot of points because they're they're all really good um and they're just doing their role i know jason tatum is going to catch a lot of flack for his 32 percent shooting at 17 points but if you watch the game jason controls everything on offense he dribbles the ball up the court he starts setting screens he gets the ball he passes it um getting guys easy looks like it would be nice if he shot 50% and averaged 25 and they would win by more points, but he's doesn't need to do that They're They've won game one and two by big margins and he hasn't had to do so. So going home for game three, and we'll talk about our projections for the rest of the series, obviously will help Dallas role players play better at home. And Dallas will have and also Dallas is going to be desperate because you cannot, no team's ever come back 3-0, but the the, Celt- the the Mavericks aren't coming back down 3-0 against the Celtics. Um, yeah. So that's, it's, I just, I hate being like, there's just nothing Dallas can do, but it, it kind of feels like there's nothing Dallas can do because if you just look at how their team, like, and the, I watched a video on awful coaching. Like I, there's so much to talk about with the series, but I watched a video from awful coaching coaching um it's a youtube channel go check him out he pretty much just screams he like cuts i and i thought i recognized the name i've seen him on tiktok he yeah. is so funny dude so and but he actually knows what he's talking about and every time he's taught he's doing this video he's talking about they bring Derek lively up in the screen <laughs> to with luke so it's like luca got the ball and then Derek lively lively setting the screen but the problem is jason tatum is guarding Derek lively so what happens is J- instead of Jalen Brown guarding um, Luca, they switch the screen so that Jason Tatum um, guards Luca. There's no difference. Jason Tatum and like the- and Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. There's no difference in who's yeah. guarding who. So like they do all this like they do all this like bringing guys up in the ball screen and the guys like sitting there screaming. He's like, You're like what the hell? Like there's just no. <laughs> There's no need to bring this guy up in the ball screen. Like he sucks. Like like it's like Jason Tatum is like 
95% of the on-ball defender Jalen Brown is. There's no reason to set the screen. So then you waste 20 seconds of the shot clock doing this screen just for Jason Tatum to end up ISO on Luka, and then Luka like throws up a desperation shot at the end of the clock. So what yeah. you really need to do is bring a different guy up in the ball screen, but they don't have enough talent to do that because if you look down the Celtics roster, Derek Lively can't shoot. Daniel Gafford can't shoot. They're roll-to-the-rim guys, lob threats. Um, maybe he can do a, like a little bit of a move inside just to get a shot up, but they're not like talented offensive players. So you take those two out. The only guys who can create and make their own shots in the starting lineup is P.J. Washington, Kyrie, and Luka. Then you start going to the bench where you could say guys like Tim Hardaway Jr. and Josh Green and whatnot, but you're starting to really go down the roster there where there's just not much talent. So they're really just going to need to hope Kyrie can do something, but they're they're talking about for Kyrie too. And, and see, like Drew Holiday is fantastic. It's not some of it's Kyrie, but also he's just being clamped by a great defender. Yeah. It's like the thing is, is like at this point, like I, I do hate the Celtics so much. Like I hate their fans. I hate the organization just so much. I'm a certified hater. You can absolutely clown me for it, but they are such a good overall and well-built team that like it like this is like good for basketball for a good team to end up being this good in the finals because it's like it's not just one guy kind of taking it over it is just like this is the most like everybody like you were saying down the roster everybody's just getting decent points decent assists decent rebounds every single person is putting in the effort so and i mean just you go down Celtics roster right Really quick, um, point guard Derek White can shoot and defend. He's not a great defender, but he can still defend. Drew Holiday can shoot and defend. Jalen Brown can shoot and defend. Jason Tatum can shoot and defend. Kristaps can shoot and defend. Al Horford can shoot and defend. Sam Howerzer can shoot and defend. Um, yeah. Peyton Pritchard can shoot. Like Everybody can play defense and is not a liability on offense. So when you do that, you shrink your margin. Like Your margin for error to beat the Celtics is so small because you can't be like, oh, let's just leave Jason Tatum open and... We'll let him miss. That's what they're doing with Derek Jones Jr. over on yeah. Dallas. They're like, let him let him take three. So he'll miss them because he's not a good offensive player, but you can't do it with the Celtics. So if you leave him open, they're going to kill you. Yeah. So it's like, as much as I do hate the Celtics, I do appreciate that. Like, this is mu- like, I feel like the Celtics are like what the Knicks are eventually trying to be, where it's like, they're a very kind of two way team, like very scrappy on defense, but can also obviously like outperform you on offense kind of thing. Obviously they're constructed differently. I saw no, Justin I, I think was it's really a pretty, trying to put that together. No, I, but no, like, I think it's a, I think it's a really good comp. The only difference is that the star player on the Celtics is yeah. six ten and plays power versus, in years. Yeah. Who's five ten. <laughs> like, it was like two feet tall, yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's it it is good for basketball that team basketball is clearly like even last year as much as like Joker and Jamal Murray were kind of taking over. Like it was like the team that was putting that together, and like even and then now you see with Boston, it's like they are like the epitome of team basketball. Like yeah, it's it's good to see that team basketball is like coming back. But it kind of just sucks to watch where it's like you see that the Mavs are just not built anywhere close to play against the Celtics. And it's just like, okay, I'm going to watch Luka have an amazing performance and still lose by 20. And it doesn't matter. Yep. It, um, it, you go back to the Denver team, too. That's a team that Jamal Murray's not a great defender, but he can defend. He can show you mm-hmm. can score and defend. KCP can shoot and defend. Michael Porter Jr. can shoot and defend. Aaron Gordon shoot defend. Nicole Jokic can shoot and defend. And you just go down the roster. There's just no like, you just can't leave guys open. Whereas, yeah, when you have those holds, I mean, it's a big problem. Raj and I know all too well with Ben, like Ben Simmons and some of the Sixers teams. Like, Oof. you can some of the guys can't defend. Some of the guys can't shoot, and then all of a sudden you have just these gaps in the team that you can't overcome because they're they're liabilities. And when nobody on your team's a liability, um, you can do that. We can just. Look to the numbers here. I put this in our notes. Derek Lively in 18 minutes in game one was minus 15. Derek Lively in 19 minutes in game two was a minus 15. Like that is liability type yeah. of performance. And Derek Lively, I want to give him, like he's been fantastic. I've talked about how his mother died this year. He's a rookie in the league. Like he's really had a great season for a rookie center, but he's getting killed out there in the games because Jason yeah. Tatum's guarding him. Then he comes up and ball screen. Derek Lively is only up. Op- 
a only threat is as a lob threat or an inside threat. They can't even get the ball into him because they'll they'll double out and they can leave guys like Derek Jones Jr. or Daniel Gafford open to shoot from the perimeter because they can't shoot. Suddenly you're a one-dimensional team and things go awry. Um, and Luca has been having a good series. He's 31, 11, and 6. But he has played some god awful defense. I don't know if you guys oh, have yeah. seen the clips of him getting it's so by. bad. Um, I mean, this is what happens, right? Like you've you're carrying the offensive load on your shoulders, and you just don't want to go play defense. But I mean, the Celtics all the Celtics do is they get the ball, they blow by their defenders because it's either Daniel Gafford or Daniel Gafford, Kyrie, or Luca who get blown by. Then the D- Mavericks defense, which is pretty good, is running all over the court to yep. try to defend Boston, but everybody can shoot on Boston. Yeah. So they have to keep running on them. And eventually Boston will either have a wide open three or an easy pass inside for two. Now the Mavericks are exhausted. Then Luca mm-hmm. comes up and dribbles the ball. Well, the Celtics have a great defensive team. They burn the shot clock out. Luca chucks up a shot. That's not a good opportunity or Kyrie is terrible. And then the Celtics are coming the other way and they just repeat <laughs> like, just literally gassing like, these teams <laughs> like there's nothing they it, can do no and the Celtics don't even get tired playing defense because they switch everything they're not like running over the top of the screens it's just like yeah if Al Horford gets in the ball screen they're like all right Al Horford can def- defend Luca and he stays in front of him Luca gets a better look than if he's on being guarded by Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown but like they'll live with the Al Horford shot if he makes it cool if he misses it great yeah and as long as it's contested the- like you know what it's fine like okay yeah, I mean, with any player, if you're going to shoot a 30-foot three, step back and cash it in 50% of the time, well, you know what? Good it's just you. good. Like, sorry. Yeah. Like, It's just... Who let this team get all these players in the offseason? Well, off it's a season? testament to Brad Stevens, right? Like, yeah. he go, he's the coach of the team. He moves exactly. up to the executive office. He won executive of the year this year, and this is the reason why. You assemble a team. I, I think people... I'll have to look at the package real quick. Um, when Chris Tops was traded, a lot of people were like, uh, like... Um, I don't know about give this. Up too much. Yeah. And it's like, you might, well, this also the drew holiday trade into it too. And this is where they just get in. Like the Celtics were willing to get rid of their pieces and say, we're going to win now. And other teams aren't always willing to that. So Celtics got Chris stops 25 pick this year. Wait, no. In the draft last year. Um, oh. I don't even know who they drafted with that. And they got a first round pick. Um, top four protected for this year coming up. Um, and then the Grizzlies got Marcus smart. And then the wizards got Tyus Jones, Neil Gallinari. Like it was just a robbery pretty much. It's just because they wanted to get rid of contracts. Yeah. Um, and that's great. But you know, Brad Stevens saw an opportunity to improve their roster with a guy who could shoot and defend yep. at the center position. They did that. And then they go in, and I think people forget, like, Drew Holiday wasn't a Boston Celtic. Like, Drew Holiday just joined the Celtics this year. Yeah. It's like, it's, not, it's like oh, this is the team that still lost to Miami last year. No, no, no. This team is drastically different. Yeah. Like, Drew Holiday is just an upgraded version of Marcus Smart. And they yeah. made the conference finals last year and played in a game seven last year with Marcus Smart on the roster. Then you yeah. just gave Drew Holiday, who, and I, I think just people forget, like, Drew Holiday... Um, has been on an all NBA team before he won a title in 2021 with the Bucks. Like this isn't like some role player. Like Drew Holiday is like a good three on a championship team. Yeah. And they, they added this guy um, there. So I just, Brad Stevens has done a great job there and he just saw the opportunities to improve the team. Like the Celtics got Drew Holiday, the Blazers got Malcolm Brogdon, Robert Williams, a first Oh, the first they got from the uh, trade with Chris Stops. A 2029 unprotected first round pick, which that could be worth a lot in 2029. But they're just saying, hey, screw the future picks. In 2029, 20, they hope to have Tatum and Brown in the roster, so they're not going to be bad. Um, and that's how they go get Drew Holiday. Like you just keep making the trades on the yeah the outside, and like the, the, everyone knew when Drew Holiday left the Bucks that and went to the Blazers because it was the Dame for Drew trade. Yeah, the Blazers didn't want the Blazers didn't want Drew Holiday because they're young. They want to tank and get good picks. So yeah, they the don't want a, just say, a good defender to like keep teams in low scoring games. It's like, nah, throw the offensive like rookies out there and see what they can shoot. Like, no, yeah, ex- ex- exactly. Drew Holiday doesn't want to be there. The Blazers don't want them. So then the Celtics just go, oh hey, we could probably get this guy for a little bit better of a deal because the Blazers just want picks and young guys. And 
you switch out Malcolm Brogdon, Robert Williams, and Marcus Smart for Drew Holiday and Kristaps Porzingis. That feels like a pretty good deal. Yeah. And then you just work the rest of the team around. I mean, it's just like a, a masterclass in building the team. And everybody's screaming from the rooftops. Jalen Brown, Jason Tam, they can't work together. It's like they might not be a match made in heaven, but they're good enough to be up 2-0 in the finals. And they were yeah. in the finals last year, a couple of years ago with the Warriors. Like, mm-hmm. And let's not forget, Derek White became insane. Oh, out yeah. Nowhere. Bald Derek White is I mean, on demon time. He shaved his head, and next thing you know, he's playing yeah. like, out of his mind. And that's a guy that they got from the Spurs, who comes from the Greg Popovich system, really smart player, plays offense and defense, is consistent, plays a couple years in Boston, gets more comfortable with the team. This year, he's in the right now in the finals, he's averaging 17, 4, and 4. Like, he's a great player for them. Um, yeah. It's just, it's. <laughs> it sucks watching Boston like just do this basically the right way where they just are moving the exact right chips and pieces at the right time to get the right players to then build up a team around like their relatively young talent to surround them with like good players. Cause like, People, I, I do remember what you were saying about like the, the Porzingis trade where they're like, oh, they kind of gave up a decent amount for Porzingis. He's going to turn out. It's like, well, yeah, when Porzingis is the fifth option on the team, yeah, he's going to be good. Like, what are you talking about? You don't, like, if Kristaps was your, like, if Kristaps is sometimes your third best player and sometimes your sixth best player, that's fine because your team's really good. Like, yeah. So if Kristaps is option three behind Brown and Tatum, that's awesome. That means he's having a good game. And he's option six behind Brown, Tatum, Holiday, White, and Al Horford. You're like, okay, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, like you can afford that because you have good enough players that are playing above him. And this is a, to compare it, it's a team like the Sixers where the Sixers fell flat in due part because Tobias Harris, who was supposed to be the third option, never played. Sorry, Raj, I know I don't want to like trigger you here. Yeah. Um, but like Tobias Harris Why? had to be the third option, wasn't playing like a third option. There's no talent beneath him to back him up. Well, Chris Stops can play like a third option and they're going to kick everyone's ass. And if he plays like a six option, they might play in a close game. And, and win so yeah. i just i applaud i like seeing basketball teams i've been consistent over the years of being like i usually root for the team that i think deserves to win the most to win uh the series just because i think it like holds a continuity in uh basketball and like especially the history books like mm-hmm. it would have been a mistake for the suns to win the championship in 21 because the bucks were a better basketball team um but and it's hard because i don't like the celtics but they are they have built this team the right way. They drafted Tatum and Brown and they built around the edges um, to make the team better. And then the Mavericks are just a flawed basketball team, which yeah. that's not the, like every team makes their run based on different situations. Listen, I don't think the heat runs were all that um, like impressive to me when they made the finals for two years. Um, obviously the Lakers had help in 2020 with the bubble um, and all this different type of stuff. But like the Mavericks made it out of the West because they had some favorable matchups. They didn't have to play Denver early. They got to play Minnesota instead of Denver and they made the finals, not fraudulent at all. But then you run into a team that is a lot more complete than the Timberwolves. Like the Timberwolves biggest problem is the Timberwolves can't play offense 90% of the time. The Celtics have five guys on the core who can shoot and are yeah. reliable. You're yeah. like, like what? I mean, going the, it must be compl- like the difference between playing a team that has Rudy Gobert as your center and Cat as the power forward to having to play like Chris Stops and Tatum, who are on the perimeter. Like Cat and Tatum play the same position; they're, yeah. they're completely different players to have to defend against. So, um, but the series is not over. Um, it's two two zero. We're heading back to. Dallas tonight, which we're recording us on Wednesday. You'll see this on Thursday, so you'll know what happened with the result of the game. Yep. Um, but so we're heading back. We're heading back to Dallas. Um, obviously Dallas is down 0-2. What? Let's first go. What do? What do? What does Dallas need to do better? <laughs> Play. <laughs> I mean, I think overall they got to figure out their defense. Like just period. Like Luca needs to just put in more effort on defense. I know it's hard because he's carrying the full brunt of the offense, but like you can't just be a traffic cone. 
Like you got to put some effort in and like that's really kind of their big thing. I think is like their defense because it's not like Boston is scoring 140 points a game. Like they've only averaged like right above a hundred points a game. So like you can, I could see a possibility where you could win a shootout with them, but you need to be able to play good enough defense that they can't just take wide open shots every single time. Yeah. Um, the first thing I would do is pray. Um, because you need <laughs> to keep hoping. The, the first thing you need to keep doing is that hope that Jason Tatum is terrible. Like Jason Tatum, give him all the flack in the world. I think he's had a really good series aside from the shooting, but Jason Tatum is not a career 32% from the field shooter. If Jason Tatum shoots 50% in one game, you're absolutely toast. You're going to lose that game. Yeah. So you've lost two games and he's been not good at shooting the basketball. So if he shoots the basketball good, you're toast. Um, so pray that Tatum is still bad. Um, and pray that like Jace, Jalen Brown is gets worse, whatever. And then the second thing you need to do is they need to create favorable matchups. Like we talked about a little earlier, like they're not Kyrie will have the ball and they'll set a screen and they'll switch like J- Jalen Brown or Drew Holiday or Jason Tatum onto the screen. You need to like find a way to get Kyrie to match up with Porzingis so that they yeah. can try to do a blow a blow by, get the defense in rotation. Like they're not creating any favorable matchups to themselves for no. themselves offensively. Like stop doing this Derek Lively. Luca Don Doncic pick and roll because you're just switching Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum as your defender. You're not creating an advantage there. But if you can put Luca on Al Horford, Luca on Chris Stops, Luca on Derek White, you're suddenly feeling a little bit better about that yeah. situation there. And maybe you could get something going. Um I think the Mavericks should just play small, like five, like stop Daniel Gafford, stop Derek Lively, put Tim Hardaway Jr., who can be a defensive liability, and go out there and say, kind of Peter, what you said. Go try to shoot the lights out at the gym, yeah, and and get a win. Obviously, they're still going to play big at times because if they put Al and Chris Dobbs on the floor at the same time, you're cooked. But <laughs> um, but like just I don't know, run a zone something. Like if they're everyone's getting cooked off the ball, maybe it's better to sit back in zone and you know the Celtics destroy zone because they shoot the ball so well. But maybe say hey, maybe they'll miss all the shots today. Yeah, maybe the crowd noise will finally get to them. Maybe the lights will be too bright that game. I don't know. Try yeah. so, you got to do something different to at least show you're trying because you could just completely give up at this point. But if you like try something different, it's like, look, we threw the book at them. They beat everything. I don't know what you want us to do. Mm. What they need to do is shoot the three ball better because if it's not good, Luca has accounted for eight of your thirteen yeah. made threes. In two yeah, games. that's bad. I didn't even know it was uh, that bad. See. It's awful. Yeah, it's bad. PJ Washington one for eight. Kyrie zero oh for eight. Um, Derek Jones Jr. one for five. Hardy one for three. Josh Green one for four. Uh, Tim Hardaway zero oh for one, and only Dante Exum is one. Oh, for well, there we go. We got one dude in there. <laughs> Well, so what they're doing a lot is they're just letting these players who like they'll double off Luca, and then one guy at the top of the three point, like right in dead center, will just start taking threes. But it's because they're leaving guys open who are not good at shooting. But yeah, they've got to hit those. But they have also just to put shooters on the court. Like it's hard because uh, Derek Jones Jr. is your best defender for Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, but that man can't play offense. So it's like <laughs> you have again. You the problem is you if you're the Celtic, if you're the Mavericks, you can't defend the Celtics and you can't score on the Celtics. So you have to either decide, are you going to just be, are you going to try to defend the Celtics or are you going to try to score against the Celtics? I would try, I would go with, I would go with the scoring option because maybe the Celtics will be cold. And listen, there's going to be, the Mavericks are going to be super desperate tonight against the Celtics and the Celtics are probably not going to be that desperate. So I could see them poaching a win um, off them. But again, the Celtics just have so much room for error. Like I, I hate being like, oh, there's nothing the Mavericks can do, but this is a 2-0 that feels like the Mavericks have never had an answer for. Yeah. Um, they hardly led in game one. It got close. Like they went on a 9-0 run the Mavericks did to cut that lead from like it was like 18 down to like nine or something. But it was like fool's goal because they went on like a 9-0 run and the Celtics just got the lead right back and it was over. Um, and the same thing kind of happened in game two. Like I'm just watching and it's just like Oh, yep, this team isn't equipped. And I said before the season series that I thought the only way that the Mavericks could w- Mavericks could win is if Luka was averaging 40, and that might not be enough, and he's not averaging 40, and it's not enough. 
Yeah. That's just like he's 31, 11, and six on the offensive end of the floor, 51% shooting. And it's not enough because the Celtics are just far better than you. Yeah. And they're, they'll send doubles to Luka occasionally, but they're just like, eh, if he scores, he scores. Cool. Yeah. We'll, we'll just hold, make sure we'll nobody hold. else on the team can score. Cool. Yeah. We'll, we'll make sure Kyrie Irving is shooting 35%. Um, and we'll make sure no one else scores. Um, it's just, uh, it's just a lot, a lot for them to answer. Um, I guess we can go into prediction time. What do you, <laughs> so Raj was initially a Mavericks in six or five guy. Six. Six. Still, still, still am, still bruh. Is. They're gonna do the reverse I believe, sweep. I believe. I believe. On a completely unrelated note, I just want you guys to guess the final score of the Twins and Rockies game. Okay. Uh, well, if the, fa- the fact that you're asking me this makes me think there's gonna be a lot of runs. It's either but... one nothing in like fifteen innings or like <laughs> thirty to twelve. I'm gonna go seventeen to two close it was 17 not jesus twins. that's brutal the twins dropped 17 runs that's, that's almost that's almost a football <laughs> score <laughs> it's, it's a complete side yeah. note Two there's some football. stuff in baseball sometimes where like like the twins were they made the playoffs last year but they've been really mid to start this year mm-hmm. and they'll just like score 17 and you're just yeah. like out of nowhere meanwhile i've never watched the phillies score 17 and they're kicking everyone's <laughs> ass exactly um, he, even yesterday, the Dodgers have been really shaky, like offensively, really not putting up a lot of runs. Uh, they've had a lot of losses, and I thought they should have won those games. Then they just hung nine last night yeah. on, uh, I forget who they were playing, but they just hung nine last night, and I was just like, oh, they're like, they're back. Yeah, sometimes um, the bats just get hot, and it's just like, oh, this game is over. <laughs> like, never there's ten, nothing never, you can do. Never the Phillies bats, though. I've never watched no. the Phillies ever like decimate a team. It's always like it, six runs is like the maximum, but they'll win. Yeah, it's like, oh, they'll win by five or six runs all the time, but it's like they never like, I want to just watch a game where we score like 26 runs. Yeah. And it's just like, <laughs> that'd, that'd be fun, but we'll anyways, never have Roger, Roger's still a Mavs and six guy. It, is that, I am a Mavs is that ego guy. or is that like, is that delusion or is that uh based in fact? Uh, yeah. Delusion of no, delusion. A hundred percent. I am delusional. Peter, what do you think? Uh, so I was Mavs in seven with a Luka game, game winner <laughs> over, Tat- <laughs> over Tatum. Um, currently, uh, I'm looking either at a Mavs down 3-0 coming all the way back and winning in seven, or it's going to be a sweep by Boston. <laughs> no in between. Because I think, I think if if the Celtics win tonight, I think this series is just straight up over. Like there's nothing that's going to change like this next time. Um, if the Mavs are able to win tonight, I could see them gaining some momentum. Cause that means they figured out a way to win. And then maybe they could just keep trying at that. But realistically, I think it's just going to be Boston in four to five. Yeah. I think I'm, I'm down to Boston in five. Initially I was a Boston in seven. I was leaning more towards Boston in six, but I decided I'd keep it at seven because of my rule that the best player in the series often wins the series. So I was like, I'll give them seven. Um, I'm more at five now. It's just, I don't see a way that Dallas is going to get two games off of Boston in a row. And if it's three, one going back to Boston, I think they'll just handle it. Like it's going to, I think it's gonna be three, one either way. I think they're, Mavericks are. I think the Mavericks will lose tonight, and they'll go down three zero. I think they'll ch- just like be so desperate in Game Four that they'll they'll win that game. They, I think they'll honestly probably blow. If I had to make a prediction, I think it's going to be a three point win by Boston tonight. It's going to be that game where it's like, oh, if Dallas had gotten this, it could have changed the yeah. entire series, but they didn't because they're not good enough. And then Dallas is going to blow Boston out in Game Four because Boston's going to be like, you know what? It would Let's be win cool at to home. win the, Yeah. Yeah, it'd be fun to win the NBA finals our first since 2008 on our home floor um with our fans and then they're just going to get kicked out of the gym and Dallas is going to be playing with so much like pride because they don't want to like have the celebration We didn't on their get court. swept. Let's yeah. go. And then the Celtics are going to destroy them in game 
five and then we're all going to be like well boston one and five guys and you know everyone who was stressing about the close the close wins against indiana the close wins against yeah. cleveland and dropping game two is we're going to be like oh wow it was actually just boston this entire time yeah exactly uh, that's that's how i see the situation going um yeah. again i just don't there's just so many boston doesn't have to make any adjustments dallas has to make all the adjustments and then the only situation I can see is if Dallas makes a ton of adjustments tonight, Boston is not prepared to match them. Mm-hmm. And then they'll match them for game four and go up 3-1. But we'll see. I mean, Dallas has an opportunity here. They have to win this game. Get it to 2-1. They have to. Get it to 2-2. And then if you get it to 2-2, and it's you get the momentum back. But that's yeah. going to be hard to do. Um, I don't view this like a matchup kind of where like the Nuggets were down 0-2 on the Timberwolves. And then it's like, well, they have... Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray to bring it back. Mm-hmm. It's like they don't have those guys um, on their entire team. So we will see. Um, yes. In football news, taking a little bit yes. back from basketball. Shockingly, Aaron, we have some football news. <laughs> but not shockingly, it's Aaron Rodgers missing mandatory minicamp, um, which is Who just like, guessed? it's just the most predictable thing he could do. Yeah. So. To, for for context for those that don't know even though it's like the only thing that the nfl has been talking about because there's <laughs> nothing else going on um robert sala the head coach of the jets was asked after mandatory the first day of mandatory minicamp hey where's aaron Rodgers?" and robert you know, sala is like 40 million dollar a year quarterback <laughs> Who's supposed to be bringing the Jets back to the promised land for the first time since uh, there was colored television? Um, and Robert Sala says, like, you know, we've been talking and everything. Uh, we've communicated. I, like, I know what's going on with him. Uh, it's, but it's an unexcused absence. And everyone's like, what? Like, what do you mean it's an unexcused absence? Like, like, where is he? And it's no, like, yeah, it's he a- just needed to be away from... <laughs> the team right and now it's like the point the weirdest thing about it is robert sala knows about it but it's not excused which means it's not that big of a deal yeah like so any because any family matter or whatever like would yeah. be an excused absence yeah so i think so first let's go conspiracy theory and just like our lord and savior aaron Rodgers, and let's put the tinfoil hats on yep. and start screaming about this because that's a lot more fun even though there's probably a more realistic answer to this but i like content so that's what we'll do um like the fact that aaron Rodgers, yes he showed up at all of the, the optional stuff he showed up at all the voluntary workouts this is such a bad look it's for- terrible for him just to be like yeah i'm just not showing up to the mandatory one like you know i don't wanna i'm somewhere else away from football even though it's the mandatory stuff like i don't want to be there i've played four snaps with this team who cares it but it's the most predictable aaron Rodgers thing ever like oh yeah sure sure he did he did something good in terms of going to the um the involuntary like the ones that he didn't he the voluntary um yes mini camps like that was great that he went there um that's with the added context that he played three snaps of football last year off an achilles injury and you know what he probably needed reps so i don't really view that as a for the team thing i view that as a for aaron Rodgers thing because he needed to play snaps of football because he yeah. hadn't played in a year so then he goes to the uh voluntary stuff and you're like ah aaron Rodgers team guy so glad to hear it and then as soon as he does that, you loop him right back into the missing mini camp. And the way th- my problem with the tinfoil hat thing, right, is that is Aaron Rodgers. So it's saying something like he's attending something that's, quote, important to him. That's the quote important to him from Robert. Sala. Yeah, it's like, that could be anything that, that makes me think it's either supporting the RFK cam- campaign, <laughs> um, going to an ayahuasca conference, going yeah. to a conference related to the moon landing being fake. Um, maybe some under underground like QAnon, like secret conspiracy Whatever group. Thing. He could um, be going to on another darkness retreat. Another yet yep. again. Like this like, is like it could be anything. It is, it is not a far stretch to say that these things that the thing that he's attending right now that's quote important to him, but not excused absence is just really him just doing stupid stuff, which he's been doing for the <laughs> yeah. last couple of years, and so it drives me up the wall because. 
Aaron's a guy I really like want to like you. I watched him win the Super Bowl with the Packers. I think I was like around 2008 and it was the first um Super Bowl yeah. that I had wa- it was super first Super Bowl that I had watched and so I really became a fan of Aaron Rodgers cuz he was like the quarterback for the team that won and he's obviously supremely talented but he just like it's fool me once shame on you fool me twice shame on me it's like i keep getting roped back into oh you know maybe he'll like he's now maybe he's turning it around maybe he's like not gonna be as weird this time nope he's still insane yep and i felt like this was the last time now i'm just like i'm done like unless i hear a good (laughs) reason why he had to miss it but i don't think there's a good reason because he would have been excused yeah exactly there's like a ton of good reasons i can think of like for robert sava to sit up there and say yeah, I knew about it. It was an, it's not an excused absence, but it's important to him. It just means to me that the Jets organization doesn't think it's that important because otherwise you would protect your fifty million dollar a year quarterback, even if it wasn't a good reason to miss. Like if I was so, like, oh. go ahead. Yes, no. So th- to take the tinfoil hat off a little bit, not yeah. a lot, just a little bit. Um, I think the reason why they specifically say it's an unexcused absence is because in the uh, in the CBA, so like in the like players' union, whenever they sign the contracts, it's like whenever there's like an unexcused reason for missing there, like they can be fined and stuff like that. So like he might have told the team like far in advance about this and like have them known about it and like they were like totally okay with it. But like for those like con- like contractual reasons, they might have just had to call it an unexcused absence. But at that point, you don't need to tell the media that it's an unexcused absence. No. Who cares? That's, like, what, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Like, if I was a quarterback for the team and I said, hey, I'm going to my buddy Raj's graduation party, and um, could you could I please have the day off? And then yeah. they were like, well, we're really not happy about this, but you know, we don't want to create any like stir in the media. So, yeah, Justin, you're excused for the day. Go enjoy your friend Raj's graduation yeah. party. Okay, cool. Um move on and then if they ask why wasn't he at camp oh you know he was on a personal reason um it was it's an excused absence yeah but or just don't even s- don't even use that wording just say he, he, like i know where he's at like he's like he's all's, all good. good like we're on the same page like he'll be back soon like that's all you need to say like don't say that like but just why, start that throws everybody off but that's why i know it's not an important reason because robert Sala exactly. is selling him out in the media which <laughs> sh- honestly shame on robert Sala. you should just do it like yeah You've got like the last thing the Jets need is negative press right now. Yeah, the last dude. thing they need, <laughs> and these poor Jets go, fans. Go on there. Yeah, you know I know where he's at. He's told me, but it's unexcused. Why? Because he's at a freaking ayahuasca concert, <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, ayahuasca um, convention in like yeah. Los Angeles, or he's out there campaigning for the RFA RFK campaign. Um, yeah. What not? Anti vaccine. So I don't know. And this yeah. is just so bad for many reasons. Like. This, I looked this up because I wanted to check. Do you guys know what the first three positions the Jets took in the draft this year? Uh, hang on. It was... Yeah, Lineman? it was lineman. It was... I. Oh, it was like all offense, right? Yeah, they drafted an offensive tackle in the first round, a wide receiver in the third round, and a running back in the fourth round. So yeah. you're, during mandatory minicamp, you're going to miss the entire week when the guys on your team, an offensive tackle, wide receiver, and running, they're so important to your success this year. That fourth round <laughs> running back is going to play a lot of snaps. Your third round wide receiver is going to play some significant snaps. And Olu Fashnu is going to be the left tackle for the future. And instead of doing that, instead of showing up for them and making sure you got your stuff down, you're like, yep, nope, not going to show up. Also, they could have moved. Like, if this was such a big deal that Rogers told them about this before, they could have had mandatory minicamp last week. They could have moved it yeah. so that way it wasn't interfering with this. Yeah, yeah because it's not a big deal because he's at some place <laughs> he shouldn't be at. Like, he doesn't. He doesn't. Dude, he's, he's been doing this for years. I'm like, surprised. He doesn't get the benefit of the doubt because he never. Like, he always doesn't show up. He always makes mistakes. He always blames other. Like, this is not. If this was like Jalen Hurts, I'd be like, and it, they said it was unexcused, I'd be like, well, it must be really important to Jalen Hurts. Like, yeah, and he must so be doing that, something really good. And it like comes out that he's doing like charity work. And yeah. it's like, yeah, that that tracks. I know he I know Aaron ain't doing anything important. <laughs> also, he knows he's not because he doesn't put out a statement. Like if he yeah, was doing exactly. something important, he'd put out a statement and just be like, 
hey guys, I know it's probably disappointing. Hey, Jets Nation, I know it's probably disappointing to hear I'm not at mandatory mini camps, but I'm currently in like Africa building water wells <laughs> yeah. for like children. Like, yeah. it's really important to me. But no, he's. But the thing is, he has responded to some things. He has tweeted he? about some stuff because it was like, I think it was, it was, um, Oh, God. I think it was Diana Rossini, I think, tweeted this out and was like basically kind of chirping him about it. Was like, um, Aaron Rodgers not at mandatory minicamp because he is somewhere that is more important than football, like to him or something along those lines. And Rodgers, I think, kind of like challenged that and was like, oh, like, like, well, uh, like we're on the same page, like, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, why don't you just say where you are then? If it's that, then just say it. To- like, if, that, if it's that important to you, you shouldn't be embarrassed or like scared yeah. to tell people. Yeah. Like, all right, tell us where you're at. And again, there's <laughs> no, there's no death in the family, no child being born. Oh my god! Or... Wait, sorry. I literally, as I just said that, I got the tweet on my Instagram. Uh, That's it so was, funny. Aaron Rodgers is skipping all of Jets' mandatory minicamp this week because he prefers to be somewhere else besides football. That's his choice. <laughs> That's I mean, such a good tweet that's true like there's just there's nothing else around that and it's terrible for the draft picks that are coming in it's terrible for team vibes and you know what like you need to make the playoffs this year you've got you've you got lucky not lucky is a strong word you didn't have the scrutiny last year because you lost Aaron Rodgers early and you had Zach Wilson playing quarterback the Bills and the Dolphins aren't going anywhere. Like they're still going to be a tough out in your yeah. division. Like you, you have to start the season strong. Your first game of the season is the 49ers on Monday Night Football, and you're not going to be as prepared because you've skipped an entire week of practice, a mandatory yeah. mini camp because you're off again supporting RFK's campaign um, <laughs> against like on a crusade against uh, Dr. Fauci. Like that's that's what that's what like, that's what he's doing. Like I just, I I know that's what he's doing. He has some, he's at some anti-vaccine com- like conference, and he's like <laughs> the guest speaker there. Oh God, yeah, he's like, guys, I'm telling you, <laughs> guys, this is the same off season. Rocks, where, guys, it's the same off season where he said he was going to potentially be the vice president for RFK. <laughs> like, the, like, the, like, like, this is not like <laughs> the idea that he's not off doing something ridiculous right now is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I cannot wait till this season the Jets go like eight and nine and miss the playoffs and Aaron Rodgers retires and the Jets are just nuked. <laughs> like, oh god, it's gonna be so funny, dude. We've we've had like we've really had the full Aaron Rodgers experience, right? Like last year, tears his Achilles and he and honestly a pretty like in, he's not really injury prone, so it's like wow, this is a freak accident that sucks for the Jets. Like they're so unlucky, but then. He recovers. Maybe he's going to come back in January. He was never coming back in January. And then, yeah. um, so you go off season. He's at all the voluntary stuff. And you're like, wow, what a great guy. Like, he's really in for the team. Like he's really impressed. Jan- Nathan. Then a report comes out that he's on the quote short list for RFK's vice presidential candidate in a third party run. You're like, oh, wow. Okay. He wants to be the vice president over playing football. That's interesting. Then, okay. He's not picked for the vice president. Um, which he never denied. He li- never denied. Like he would, he would have surely become the vice president. He would have surely been the candidate if they had picked them for it. Then you, after that whole drama, so you're like, finally, we can just focus on football with Aaron Rodgers. Now he's somewhere off, except a mandatory mini camp for a team that pays him fifty million dollars a year to be the star quarterback and get them back to like you said, Peter, the promised land. And he's like, yeah, I'm not gonna show up. I'm not gonna tell you my reason why either. Oh God. And the honestly poor Jets in this situation a little bit. I mean, they did sign the guy, but like they can't tell him no because yeah, then it's like that he's going to just retire <laughs> like, or he's just or they're like, if you put down the hammers that you have to be here or else we're not going to play you. Well, then then you if you don't play him, you're going to suck. We saw what it was yeah. like with Zach Wilson last year. Yeah, yeah, true. Wait, who's who Tyron the Taylor? They actually have now? a good backup quarterback now. Oh, so oh, like. God. They have a good guy to back him up whenever Aaron Rodgers is too busy doing ayahuasca and summoning like demons in the locker room. But um yeah, they're still not gonna Oh my god. Wait. I forgot they have Jordan yeah. Travis. Yeah, they do. 
they're going to try to they they are praying to god that Jordan Travis can at least get one off season with Aaron Rodgers and get some mentoring cuz they're like hey maybe he'll be like Jordan Love let's hope to god yep. because at this rate Rodgers is not going to help us nope he's preparing for yeah. his 2028 run for president um god you know i don't know who's going to win the AFC East anymore the jets could be like that the Bills have fallen well, off. Well, we know it's not like the Patriots. That. The <laughs> well, that, yeah, we know Tru- that truthfully, is- this is like to me, this whole recent minicamp thing is a disaster for the Jets. Like Hassan Reddick, who you traded for and was supposed to. Oh my help, God! Yeah, I forgot about that. Like who was supposed to help replace the loss of Bryce Huff, who went to the Eagles. He's not showing up to minicamp because he needs a new contract. Well, the Jets don't want to pay him a new contract because currently. They're paying Aaron a ton of money to be the quarterback for the team when he's too busy doing whatever the hell else he thinks is more important than playing football. So, like, your Aaron Rodgers and your best defensive edge, they're not at minicamp right now. Um, and you've got to go into a season where this is, like, make or break stuff. Like, this is the best yeah. your team is – best your roster has been in decades. And your oh best and just quarterback for the team is not showing up. Yeah. The Jets are I, mean, so I am cut. trying to rack my brain around what could be so important for him not to show up to minicamp, but it not be count as excused. He's re- he's reconnecting with his family. That I mean, is that I can guarantee. I would put ten thousand dollars on it right now that he's not doing that. But I I just feel like the Jets would maybe approve the absence if he was like, listen, there's a big family reunion. I'm going to just be gone for a day or two. <laughs> is that okay? He's missing the entire week. I, like, it's just so dumb. Like, come on. Like, you were a professional f- quarterback in the NFL. Go to minicamp. Like, it's, oh, God. It's, it's infuriating. But can we talk about something else that's dysfunctional? Yes. Yeah, please. The, the yeah. Lakers the Lakers coaching carousel. Oh, yeah. That's less dysfunctional. Right. I forgot oh, about that. God. Like, it's honestly, it's at a point where it's ridiculous. So this comes in the context of Dan Hurley getting an offer, a, a can't miss offer of six years, $70 million to make him the sixth highest paid coach in the league. Um, so the whole coaching, uh, you guys talked about this on the podcast. It was just the two of you about how... Um, like we were talking about JJ Redick being the coach and it is what it is. Then they come out middle of the night report after game one of the finals. Um, it's like, Oh, Dan Hurley, the Lakers are going after him. And everyone and their mom should have known the Lakers weren't actually going to get him because the Lakers lowball every single coach they ever try to sign and they can never hold on to a coach. So then it's yep. like, wow, Dan Hurley is going to be the coach of the Lakers. That's crazy. Actually. No. Cause they, they lowballed him. Do you, okay. Whenever, everybody saw that the lakers like were trying to hire a coach you know every single like analyst at like sports center espn they all were like thank god we could talk about the lakers again because yep. this finals is so boring it, we need to talk about the lakers yeah there it, anything lakers comes up it, and as before we had the whole technology issue it just like I, as soon as they said they were going to try to go after Dan Hurley, it was very obvious they weren't actually going to get him because they lowball every single coach they ever go for. And then yes. um, some other people said this, mainly Nick Wright, so it's like stealing his thing a little bit. But like the most predictable thing is that when they sign J.J. Redick after the finals are over, because right now he's calling the finals, they can be like, well, guys, we tried to get Dan Hurley, the back-to-back national champion who's great at his job. We tried to get him, but he denied our offer. When in reality, you're offer was paying him the sixth highest coach in the league which is good but not dan hurley like dan hurley is going to make a good has a good chance to go for a three-peat in the ncaa next year yeah and that also, guy like, gets paid more than monty williams yeah it's like that exactly it's like you are underpaying this guy who then has to like completely change his style of coaching which is what has made him he has so to move across good. the country he has to move across the country, which is actually a, like a much bigger deal than I think people kind of like put in perspective. Like he's from New Jersey. Like he's an East Coast guy and like all of his family lives out there. Like he's going to have to pick up his family, move them out to Los Angeles, be under the most scrutiny in the entire NBA because he's the head coach of the Lakers with LeBron James. Like 
it's going to be absolutely chaotic or he could just, you know, try to cement his name in college basketball history by being the first, uh, either the first or one of the only coaches to, to three Pete with the team. Like that is insane. And not to mention it, you and UConn could just go like, Oh, were the Lakers going to pay you a lot of money? Well, we'll just throw all of the money we yep. have at you to make you stay. <laughs> like we don't care. Like this is the only thing UConn only has basketball. We will throw everything we have at you to make you stay. It's just like the Lakers are ridiculous. They they said they won Jason. They were going to prepare an offer for Jason Kidd, who's currently coaching in the finals. They didn't get Jason Kidd. The Dallas Mavericks gave him a contract extension for more money. They said they wanted Ty Lue this season when he needed a contract extension. The Clippers promptly gave him a huge contract extension, and they're not getting Ty Lue. They wanted Dan Hurley. Dan Hurley. They talked to Dan Hurley. They promptly didn't get Dan Hurley and he got a contract extension with UConn. Like, yeah, it's, and also he, right now he's out scouting at like some like high school AAU tournament. Like he was never coming to the Lakers. Yeah. They just made it seem like he was going to come to the Lakers. Cause they wanted to say they tried, which I don't have a problem with them going and getting JJ Redick. I really don't have a problem with it, but it's all just so that they can be like, guys, we tried to get somebody better, but we, we know how it looks. LeBron's podcast buddy. We know this isn't a great look, but we tried. That's what they that's what they want to say. Yeah, because they, they want to just try to like hedge their bets, even though it's like, look, if you're going to go try to get and hire JJ Redick, go all in. Like, don't don't beat around the bush. Like, if that's the guy that you think is actually going to help this team, go get him. Quit the bullshit. Like, yeah. stop trying to pretend like, oh, well, we're going to try to hire some other coaches, but like, oh, those kind of fell through. So, like, we did do a full. It's like, look, just go get your guy. I don't care who it is. Just go get him. Yep. they Because JJ can't accept this job because he's calling the NBA finals, which right now, which is fine. But you that means you didn't need to start this whole Dan Hurley thing because you yeah. offered you offered him money like you wanted him yeah. to be your coach, but you just gave him a terrible offer. Again, there's like the Monty Williams is a good coach, but there's that like bar for a paycheck you need to clear for him because the guys in the league right now, Popovich, Kerr, they're not going to get, he's not going to get more money than those. Then you have like Ty Lue, Jason Kidd. um, There's one other guy I'm missing missing right now. Those guys are like the top five coaches in the league. Then there's Monty Williams. Good coach, but you need to pay him, Dan Hurley, back-to-back national champion, more money than you pay Monty Williams. They didn't even try. And listen, some of this comes down to the Lakers are not as rich of a basketball like franchise as other teams are. Like Steve Ballmer got a ton of money. The way you pay coaches comes out of uh, the cap differently. Like, it doesn't come against the cap. So like it's yeah. about how much the owners want to pay for you. But So I understand that they're at that little bit of a disadvantage. But like if Dan Hurley is your guy... For the future, because Dan, Hur- you're not getting Dan Hurley to help you win a championship next year. You're getting Dan Hurley, so he'll help you win a championship next year. And then when LeBron retires, you can really develop some young guys. So he's your yeah. coach for the next like, si- like the contract was me six years. If they had gotten Dan Hurley to a six year contract that he would have been the head coach for at least five of those six years, even if he was yeah. bad. So like, pay him a lot of money. Like it, it just blows my mind. Why? Like I know why they did it, but that you would put this out there, give him a low ball him, and then you're just gonna again, just you're just gonna be like, oh, okay, well, we'll just get JJ, you know. <laughs> but it's the guy you want. We're gonna get the the whole time. Yeah. So it's like just enough. Like stop pretending like this isn't what you're doing because like like you were saying because obviously the Lakers as a brand are stupid yep. rich, but the owner doesn't want to spend that kind of money is the whole thing. Cause they don't so, have a lot of money because they're not a, exactly. They're not a rich family. Like they're not Mark Cuban and Steve Ballmer. Exactly. Rich. Exactly. So it's like, if that's who you were going to get from the beginning, because you didn't want to shell out that kind of cash, what are we doing? You could have like, just been just, quiet for another week or two. The finals would yeah. end and then you could have JJ sign the contract and then yeah. announce him as your head coach. Like you didn't need it, to start this whole. Yeah. It just it really seems unprofessional, honestly. It, it really does. Because it's just like there's no point in this. It does. And they, they partly did this so they could pay JJ probably less money. They're like, oh, well, Dan Hurley de- declined $10 million a year. JJ, you aren't half experienced as Dan Hurley. So we're going to give you $3 million. They just want to pay him less money. Um, yeah. And the weird part about this all that's bothering me more is that LeBron apparently is out of the coaching search, but they keep doing everything to appease LeBron. Like apparently LeBron is not involved in the coaching search. That's like very well reported. Yet somehow 
JJ, who is, he has a podcast with, is the front runner <laughs> exactly, for the job. Dude. And then, and then there, like Dan Hurley, obviously is a great coach, and like you'd get him anyway. But but it's felt tweet- so random. It's like why why him? Like I get he's a really good he's college sport. coach, but like there's no connection between like why he would then leave UConn as a college basketball Peter, coach, which he's except, been for except for the fact that LeBron tweeted that he really likes Dan Hurley during oh, March wait, Madness. Oh, forgot about because the Lakers are psychos. It. They don't like they don't use <laughs> their brain. Psychotic dude. They're like, wait, hold on. LeBron's out of the coaching search, but we should still try to appease LeBron, right? No, go get the best coach. Like, <laughs> like Jesus Christ! Like get get a coach that's going to make the team good. You missed the playoffs for six <laughs> straight years for a time. Like after Kobe was done being good, and before you got LeBron, you missed the playoffs all six years. Like you don't want to do that again. LeBron's going to retire in a year or two. Like get a coach that's going to help you be good when LeBron leaves in a couple of years. That's why LeBron Dude. is not involved in the coaching search because he said, I'm not going to be here long. Don't worry. He told the organization <laughs> so to hire a coach for... They, he told the organization <laughs> to hire a coach for Anthony Davis and not himself because he doesn't know how long he's going to play. And they're Dude. going around circles trying to hire J.J. Redick and Dan Hurley because LeBron has a <laughs> podcast with J.J. and because he said Dan Hurley's a really sharp guy. It's like Aaron <laughs> Rodgers wanting Nathaniel Hackett to be the coach because he played darts with him. Like it's crazy. <laughs> like, oh my god, dude! It's just comedy at this point. It's ridiculous. The NBA has to be a comedy show. It and is, the man. finals are going to end, and JJ's going to be announced as the coach, and we're going to be like, we didn't need this whole Dan Hurley thing. We didn't, we didn't need it. <laughs> the only way the Dan oh Hurley sa- thing would have made sense is if they were like, Dan Hurley, we're going to give you eight years, a hundred and fifty million dollars. You're like the second highest paid coach of all time and he's like well and it's like whoa okay and, like, and then if he turns really trying yeah and then if he turns it down you're like well i mean we gave him the best offer you can give a guy like he just d- doesn't want to yeah. be a lakers head coach but you didn't you gave him an <laughs> offer <It's- laughs> oh my god the lakers are gonna be such a mess when lebron <laughs> finally retires dude i don't i think oh people, my god i think people just forget how bad the lakers were like you, you won the they finals were so bad you won the finals in 2010 right then 2011 12 you're kind of like eh, like what like you're kind of in the playoffs you're not making title runs whatever then you miss the playoffs for six straight years the first year you're healthy with lebron you win the finals then you're in the conference finals first round exit injuries 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 now LeBron might retire again, and you're going to be back to being dog again. Like, <laughs> dude, because I remember, because people forget there's this one clip of Kobe. I think he was on, I think I forget if it was on Jimmy Kimmel or Jimmy Fat, one of the late night Jimmys. Yeah. And they pulled up this clip of all of the Lakers like celebrating after they won, and they were like a bad. Oh, team. I remember. This is this. And the they Nick, were all this is the Nick and Young then, like, team. <laughs> Yes, dude. And then it cuts to Kobe and he is just stone faced. And then whoever the late night host is like, oh, like what? You're not happy. He's like, we used to celebrate finals wins. Yeah. What is this? <laughs> like, it was so funny, dude. It, it's just like, I just wish they would like, again, I don't have a problem with them getting JJ Redick, but like at that point, don't leak the stuff about Dan Hurley. Um, yeah. Like it, it's just all. A dumb game and again it's like the two candidates like dan hurley and jj is like oh that seems to make ha- lebron really happy when lebron told you to not pick don't a coach. do that <laughs> like Le- I, people forget lebron could leave like yeah. lebron's not all, like doesn't need to be on the team next year he might he he's going to the sixers right yeah uh, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys sound so happy about that i i, I take lebron in a heartbeat um <laughs> the Bronny draft begins. Sixers will draft Bronny in the second round, and LeBron suddenly in Philadelphia. LeBron, I'm going to say this right now. LeBron is not going to Philadelphia over LA. No. I'm sorry, no, that's Le- not okay. happening. I think all the stuff about LeBron potentially leaving. That's all like with the Bronny stuff too. That's all been like ridiculous. Like he's not leaving the Lakers. Number one, yeah. it's Los Angeles. It's one of the better cities in the U.S., especially if you have if you're rich and you can afford to live there. So like that's number yeah. one. He's big into Hollywood industry, the movie industry. He has his own movie company that's all based in Hollywood. So, like, why are you going to leave? Number two, I can guarantee you Savannah doesn't want to leave Los Angeles. Zuri and Bryce all have their, like, lives in Los Angeles. Um, Yeah. So, the idea that he's just going to move across, he's going to move to someplace different to, like, follow Bronny is not going to be the case. No. And Bronny has said in interviews he doesn't need his dad to follow him to, like, 
Utah, that's where he goes. So like exactly. Like may- maybe LeBron after another year or two with the Lakers in his third year would just go and sign a minimum to play with yeah, literally just to play with him and then retire like kind but of thing. he's not like lebron still and we'll go into our top 10 player list when the finals over is over but like he's still on my top 10 players in the league list and he's not going to waste a year of that going to charlotte to go play with Bronny because charlotte's <laughs> delusional and thinks that they, he would retire he would retire before he goes to charlotte yeah like it's just not it's just not happening so yeah Ugh, they just the Lakers drive me insane. Like, like it's, the o- the only team I could lit- unironically see LeBron going to would be the Knicks. I don't I don't think it's like even possible for him to even go there. But like that would be the only team that I could like legitimately be- see him trying. Before to the Mavericks made the finals, I would have said the Mavericks. Like I could see a scenario in which they would yeah. have gone with like a Kyrie, Luca, Bron, uh, get mm-hmm. Bronny down there. Okay, Dallas is not. Like it's far, but not crazy far from Los Angeles. Yeah, still like an up and coming city. Like okay, you could see why he would go there, want to play with Kai again. But mm-hmm. yeah, the Knicks, Mavericks, and that's probably maybe maybe Cleveland, just for the story. Oh my god, he goes back, wins another. I he might because I like I don't like. Uh, this is what drives me insane about the Jordan debate. Now we're just getting off topic, but <laughs> we're just LeBron has played on completely like dysfunctional. Like, I don't think people f- really understand how dysfunctional the Lakers are. They're oh, yeah. a terribly run basketball organization. They make bad decisions all the time. Like you can't name a good player they've drafted aside from Alex Caruso, who the ownership let walk for nothing. Like so, yeah. they got they got a good player in Alex Crusoe, and then he left in the offseason because they didn't want to pay Alex Crusoe. They could have really used Alex Crusoe this year. They got Lonzo oh Ball, God, who yeah. Lonzo Ball had an injury history. He's not as bad as everyone thinks, but Lonzo Ball wasn't the number two pick in the draft that year. They screwed that up. That by the way, they could have taken Jason Tatum that year. Um, oh, so because it was Markel Fultz, Lonzo Tatum. Um, so they they drafted. Uh, Lonzo instead of Tatum that was a big mistake they let Caruso who was their only good draft pick they got Ingram who was good but they traded him away for AD which was a good decision and then um they like Julius Randle didn't work out for them all these things don't work out for them they still don't draft Wait, well did they draft Austin Reeves yeah Okay, so oh that God. like he legitimately might be one of their better draft picks like he, he in is recent and, and like and Reeves is good but they just like they make they make bad decisions left right like the fact that the Lakers got yeah. a title in 2020 is like they're very fortunate for that or else they'd be a organization they'd be like the a laughing stock yeah, like the Boston Celtics um have been like disappointing compared to their history of titles but they have been relevant for a ton, oh, yeah. a ton of seasons like they were relevant in 2022 when they went to the finals they're relevant again this year because they're going to win the finals they went in 2008 they constantly had those easter conference final runs when lebron was dominating the east like they were at least relevant oh, yeah. the lakers were like the lakers are besides that one championship are a really irrelevant basketball team because they yeah. made the conference finals last year um and then aside from that they didn't make the conference finals until kobe was around so Funnily enough, I I think I would compare the two teams as insane as this is about to sound. I would say currently the Celtics are much more like the Yankees where like haven't won anything recently, but are still very relevant versus the Lakers who are like if the Mets went on like a Lynn sanity run. Yes. And somehow won the, the World Series, but they were just completely irrelevant for so long. And then now where they're both kind of in like cap well, hell didn't, didn't the mets they, didn't the mets win the world series in 18 or something no they went to the world series when, okay win. well so let's just call it like they went to the world's went to it in 18 it's like wow yeah. that's really off brand for the mets like, i saw happened to the lakers it was like oh yeah during that pandemic when we all played in disney like they won we won the title that's like yeah. really cool and then nothing of consequence has really happened since and you're like yeah. wow this team is just actually poorly run and bad <laughs> It's so bad, dude. Oh my Ugh. god. Anyway, I can't with anymore. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's the last thing we'll. I'll say about the Lakers, and we'll talk about more NBA. Teams. No more Lakers talk. No we'll talk, more. We'll talk more off season basketball uh, when it when it's actually the off season. Um, exactly. But for now, anyways, here's Jimmy Butler's new hairstyle. <laughs> what in the? T- what is that? Oh well, it we looks can, like his kid. Oh god. Oh my god. I could go off a, a side rant, but Jimmy Butler is turning into like. Actually, an obnoxious human being. 
Anyway, like, we'll we'll get to that. We'll get to it. <laughs> and will be next to open your rant. Oh yeah, the, the, the Jimmy Butler rant episode. <laughs> it would be three hours long. Um, <laughs> I'm bringing statistics. Anyway, oh, that has God, been episode. That has been episode 35 of the Coconut Curry Podcast. Thank you all for listening. If you like this episode and made it this far, please make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you next time.